I'm Erica Cole, publisher of Litro magazine. Um, together with Litro and Patrick Dunn from Iggy uh, Foundation, we came up with the award. I just thought, wouldn't it be fantastic if gifted kids from all over the world had access to this, to this prize? I thought that'd be a great thing to do. Eric liked the idea. Through my involvement in the board at Warwick, uh, obviously I've got a link to, to the International Gateway for Gifted Youth, Iggy, uh, and uh, we made the connection. The team loved the idea and we made it happen. I think it's fantastically important for young people to dream, for young people to create things, for young people to be given opportunities. And this prize does all of that. It inspires them to have a go, uh, gets them thinking, makes them think it's possible, and obviously, given the standard of the entries, there's tremendous potential out there. I think it's always great when um, you discover uh, a great story like you will do this evening um, from a young person mm. whose um, imagination completely blows you away. Peter's kindly accepted to read um, a snippet off of Caleb's. Uh, yeah, is it Caleb or Callum? Callum. Callum, yeah, all right. So, okay. My name is Peter Blackbad. This is an initiative between Litro and Iggy. Yeah. And um, they asked me, and I was delighted to be involved as one of the judges. The winner, I think, dazzled all the judges um, by a very sophisticated use of multiple points of view. Um, so it's about a wolf pack. Mm -hmm. Wolves are all identified individually and they all have distinctive voices and they're telling the same, um, they're recounting the same kind of uh, event. And it's really nice to, to see somebody using such a sophisticated technique, you know, at his very uh, early age. This is precocious and admirable. Here's a little taste of points of view, the winning story. First account, Alpha Wolf. It had been two snows since I, Greyclaw, took over the pack, and so far my leadership had been successful and unchallenged. All but one hunt had led to a good feed, and even then that hunt was ruined by an overexcited pup. This would be the last hunt before the snow set in, and will be the last time the pup will get an experience of the hunt itself. Now upwind of the herd of deer, I started to split the pack in two. Pack Moon, Dark Scruff, Swift Paw, and Snowtooth, were to chase the herd, so the weak deer would fall behind. And once separated from the herd, Pack Wind, which consists of me, Dare Jaw, and the pup, Tree Hide, had the job of chasing and taking down the selected deer. As I looked sideways at Treehide, I saw that he was staring straight at the herd, ears pricked up. I was wondering what his adult name would be, as I noticed Pac Moon had chased the herd and an adult was limping behind. As Pac Moon chased away the rest of the herd, I started to run forward to lead Pac Wind keeping an eye to my right paw side, making sure Darejaw was never in front of me and consequently never leading the pack in the chase. Pack Moon had done their job well, as the deer herd were now out of sight except one, and that is where I was running to. I leapt. I hit the deer's rump hard and flipped over it. The lame deer span round, losing its footing, and then was slammed into by Darejaw, his teeth literally skinning the deer, but didn't penetrate. For once, he had followed orders, and Treehide was ready for his first kill. Bang! Treehide reared back and ran as a tall, tailless animal approached, holding an object that shone like the moon. Pac Moon was just arriving when the noise killed the deer and they had fled. Treehide, petrified, had to be dragged away by his scruff. Today would not be the day Treehide would become an adult. I wanted to attack the thing, but didn't. My ancestors had told rumors about a greater animal than the honorable wolf, and now I know why. These were the animals who threw moon and sun these were the animals which could kill by moving a finger. 
These were the animals that let us starve for a day, and these were the animals that denied tree hides adulthood. Back in the clearing, I stood and looked at the pack. Brothers, I started and then stopped. Where's Darejaw? I'm Sadie Jones and I was one of the judges of the short stories. How did you go about choosing the winning entrance story? Was there, was there a lot of stories that you liked um, or did this one particularly stand out? I, I liked a lot of them but there were just a few that really jumped out and this one, um, the winning one, the Callum story, just, mm. just came right off the page. It was completely my favourite from the beginning. We had them divided into um, a, a number each and we, and we okay. each of the judges read them and then we had an, a sort of email exchange discussion to, right, to decide which okay. one. My name is Kate Williams and I'm a biographer and novelist and a lecturer in creative writing at Royal Holloway and I was one of the four judges. Point of view, we loved it. It was such an outstanding winner. We just adored it. Yeah, um, yeah. We couldn't resist it. Beautifully written, fabulous story and Callum's so young. Yeah. He's got a marvellous future ahead of him. Congratulations on winning this award. How do you feel about it? <laughs> um, Is it quite excited, a big deal for yeah. you? Like, really excited, um, looking forward to winning more. So what are you going to spend the money on? Because it's sort of £2,500, yeah. isn't it? Um, That's a lot of money. <laughs> I'm thinking of buying a laptop and putting the rest in a bank. Tell us a little bit about your story. It's about different points of view from a wolf, a hunter, an ecologist. How did you come up with this idea? Um, just literally just sort of came into your head and you just started well, I have writing? I done some work for a school recently um, about the same sort of thing, except an everyday for nits, cats, dogs, meerkats, humans, like that. My teacher, Mr. Cass, uh, I've recently given him some work about loads of different animals in a lifestyle, uh, and he gave me the form and said, uh, this is interesting, you should try it out. So um, I did, and then Wednesday, I figured I'd won, and I think we had Chinese. <laughs> You're looking for entertainment, education and enchantment, the three E's really. <laughs> um, you know, if I learn something from reading it, that there's points for that. Mm, mm. Um, if I'm entertained, needless to say, life is short. We like to be entertained. Um, and if I'm enchanted, a lot of points for that. <laughs> the prize itself, by encouraging children to just write on what they like yeah. and really how much, how much they like, is I think a wonderful thing. He doesn't just write from one point of view, just himself, it's called points of view, and it's about, you know, he goes into the mind of a deer, he goes into the mind of a hunter, he goes yeah. into several deer, and yes. some of it's funny, and some of it's quite dark, and yes. made my daughter cry in the car. And oh, she's like, really? Don't read that bit again. Oh, gosh. So it, it kind of has all of this. It was so um, nice to see someone liberate themselves from that, that very prescriptive teaching yeah. that they have in school, yeah. creative writing, yeah. well, you have to do this and you have to do that, and, you have to do and he just kind of went for it. Yeah. But it, it has structure and shape and storytelling, mm. but it's also just so original.